Have you ever worked with a stakeholder who's insisted on delaying the appearance of a next button only to be told later that they want the next button visible right away on all slide revisits? Well, today's tutorial will help you with that. So here's the example we're talking about. As you can see from this Adobe Captivate project that I have open, you can see that I have a back and next button on all of my slides here. And if you take a look at the timeline, the next button, which is this top object here, uh, has been delayed in its appearance towards the end of the slide. And I also happen to have a pause point on that particular object as well. So that, of course, the content will all display all of these objectives and of course all the slide narration will be heard before the learner has the ability to click next to continue. Of course this video is not about the merits of doing such a thing but uh, invariably we all run into the situation where our stakeholders want the course to behave a certain way. Uh, in this case here I'm going to show you a way to have the next button delayed in its appearance uh, only on the first visit to those slides. All subsequent revisits to slides will have the next button appear um, from the very beginning of the slide. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all my slides, select the next button, go to the timing panel, and make sure that they first of all appear at the beginning of the slide. I'm going to change the pause point to be later on the slide. And I'm going to go to the properties inspector and make uh, each of these next buttons not visible in output by default. So we'll do the same thing for slide number two. Here's the next button. We'll go to the timing panel. We'll have the appearance be zero seconds and the pause point in this case will be 16.5 seconds and like before not visible in output. On slide four we'll do the same thing. Timing zero seconds, pause point will be 16 seconds, and again, not visible in output. So let's go back to slide two, and how we're gonna make this next button not visible in output until, in this case, five seconds, we're gonna write a little on enter advanced action. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to the on enter action here and select execute advanced actions. We'll click on the advanced action icon to open up the advanced action window. I'll just move it a little bit to the right here so we can see our timeline. I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call it on enter actions. And the very first thing we're going to do is actually use an action called delay next actions by. And then we can input a number of seconds and we can even use decimal points here so delay next action by five seconds in this case so we're going to um, wait five seconds from the start of this slide and then we're going to show in this case next button number two because we're on slide two so i can save this as an action click ok and click close and there it is on my on enter actions for this particular slide. Here's the problem though. If I do it this way, I need to write a version of that advanced action for every single slide in my course where the appearance of the next button is going to be delayed. In a 60 or 70 slide course, that's a lot of advanced actions. So instead, this is a perfect opportunity to use shared actions. So let's go back into the advanced action window. There it is there. I'm going to save this as a shared action. Now, when you save an advanced action as a shared action, you're going to see this window here. This gives you the opportunity to give it its own unique name. I'm going to keep it the same name. I can provide a description here. So uh, delay the appearance of a next button for each slide. And some instructions here, select the number of seconds to delay and select the button you wish to 
display. So if I'm not the only person working on this course, I can communicate to the other developers exactly what I'm doing in this case. Unfortunately, Adobe Captivate seems to think that the parameter to delay the next action by a certain number of seconds is going to be the same across all these shared actions. So it doesn't have that selected by default, but I can override that and indicate that this is something that I wish to set the parameter for. So I'm just going to put some instructions for the other developers as well who might be using this. Number of seconds and button to show. So we have some basic uh, indicators as to what information we need each time we use this shared action. So I'm going to hit save and that saves that shared action. I'm going to hit close and I'll just quickly show you one point here. If I go to the library and take a look under shared actions, you'll see there is my shared action. So I can actually delete it from the library if I wish, but also see how many times I'll be using it. So far I haven't used it at all. But let's uh, rectify that now. Let's go back to my properties inspector. So in this case here, we're executing the original uh, advanced action. Let's change this to execute shared action. So there's my shared action on interactions. And this little icon here allows me to set the parameters for this particular instance of the shared action. So in this case here, I'm going to delay a number of seconds. So in this case, five seconds. And the button I wish to show is the next button for slide two. We'll save this. And now we can go to slide three and do exactly the same thing. Execute shared actions, hit the parameters. In this case here, the number of seconds will be 16. And the button that we wish to show is the next button for slide three. Save this as an action and we'll do exactly the same thing on slide four. In this case, 15.5 seconds. And the button in this case is next number four. We'll save this and we're pretty much good to go. Let's do a preview of this project and take a look at what this looks like. Click the start button to begin. Okay, so here we are on the first slide where we have a delayed next button. And you can see that it didn't appear until all the objects on screen were displayed. We'll click next at this point. Similarly, we're seeing the same thing here. So again, some animation on screen, some narration, next button isn't there. And now it is. So let's go back to the previous slide and you can see that our next button is there right away. If I go forward, also the next button is there as well. So this works perfectly. And again, you can reuse this across 50, 60, 70 slides quite easily without too much difficulty. And of course, most importantly, you can satisfy your stakeholder with navigation controls that will allow them to force their learners to view all the content, but make it easy for them to revisit the slides as well. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.